Hey guys, welcome to day 33. Um, today will be kind of the last uh, new thing we learned before our exam, which will be on Monday, um, the Monday before Thanksgiving. Okay, so the mean value theorem starts with this. Um, number one, let's talk about conditions for it. So, in order for the mean value theorem to work, first off, f must be continuous on the closed interval a, b, and f must be differentiable on the open interval a, b. So, the mean value theorem only works with differentiable functions. Again, the difference between continuity and differentiable, continuity we think of as like connected, right? No holes, no asymptotes, no jumps. Differentiable means smooth and connected. Okay, so as long as those things, conditions are met. By the way, this is one of the most heavily tested um, theorems based on its conditions. So they really like to dive into the fact that if the conditions aren't right, then we can't use the mean value theorem. Um, so let's talk about if those conditions are met. So F must be continuous on the closed interval A, B, and differentiable on the open interval A, B. Then basically what we have is somewhere between A and B, um, we'll call it point C. Somewhere in between, F prime of C must equal the average rate of change of F on A, B. So here's the formula. So there must be a point C where C is between A and B such that F prime of C equals F of B minus F of A over B minus A. That F of B minus F of A over B minus A should look familiar because that's just, the, that's just first off, it's slope of a line. It's also the average rate of change on um, the interval, interval A, B. So there's got to be a place where the instantaneous rate of change, right, F prime of C, matches the average rate of change, f of b minus f of a over b minus a. Okay, this is an instantaneous rate of change. Um, I think the mean value theorem can be best understood by looking at a visual representation of it. So um, take a look at this graph. Go ahead and copy this graph to your notes. So again, I need to sketch a graph that's continuous on a closed interval and differentiable on an open interval. Okay, this is the point A comma half of A. This is the point B comma half of B. Again, where half of A is like a Y value, F of B is like a Y value. They're the corresponding Y values for 
x value a and x value b. Okay. What this is saying is that somewhere between a and b, there might be multiple places, right? but there's at least one place where the, the slope of the tangent line matches the slope of the line that connects from um, a comma f of a to b comma f of b. So when I take a look at this, I'm just going to sketch that a that secant line first. Again, the slope of this line is change in y over change in x. Okay. What it's saying is there has to be a point C in between where the tangent line matches that slope as long as F is differentiable. Okay. Uh, I'm going to pick right about here. Looks like it matches. So as you can tell, the slope of the red line here and the slope of the blue line match. Now I might not have picked the exact perfect spot there, but you get the idea. There is, there has to be a C somewhere where that slope matches the average rate of change, f of b minus f of a over b minus a. So the equation that we kind of associate with this is f prime of c equals f of b minus f of a over b minus a. And this is true for any differentiable Right? Any continuous function on the closed interval and differentiable on an open interval um, function. Okay? Now, the reason that f must be differentiable, let me show you an example of an, a continuous but not differentiable graph and why. Right? So here the mean value theorem works. Let me show you an example of a place where it doesn't work. Or it's not guaranteed to work. Okay, so here I have a continuous function on a b but as we can tell it's not differentiable that corner up there breaks differentiability and again i take a look here and what i see find the point c where a tangent line matches that slope Right? If I chose over here, it's 2C. If I choose over here, this, it's negative. The reason I can't find a C value where I can make F prime of C match F of B minus F of A over B minus A is because of that break in differentiability, right? at that corner, right? I can't, remember, we can't do the derivative at those corners, right? So I can't, I think about 15 things I can do up here, right? I can't do the derivative up here, so MVT doesn't work. So um, I can't use the mean value theorem there because f is not differentiable. Okay. Or again, it, uh, the MVT isn't guaranteed to work. Okay. I could draw a non-differentiable one where I could get an f prime of c to match. Okay. But it's not guaranteed. Theorems are all about what we can guarantee given specific conditions. Okay. 
Let me show you an example. Um, how did I see this in table form? So if we have a table, it makes the average So f is a differentiable function. Explain why there must be a c where 4 is less than c is less than 6, such that f prime of c is 4. Now, we've seen this kind of question before, but I've been asking about f of c, right, in terms of intermediate value theorem. Well, right, if it was just f of c equals 4, I'd have to use the intermediate value theorem. And in fact, it wouldn't work here because 4 is not in between 7 and 15. Okay, but notice the table is about f. The question is actually about f prime. And then I'm asked about I'm asked about the derivative of the function I have in the table. That's a clue that it's probably going to be a mean value theorem question. So what I want to do here is figure this out. I'm going to set this up using the mean value theorem. But first, I just want to check to make sure that this actually works. And I'm placing between four and six on the table. So I'm looking at this spot right here. And again, I want to show that f of b minus f of a over b minus a equals 4. So 15 minus 7 is 8. 6 minus 4 is 2. 8 divided by 2 is 4. So I know this is going to work. Now I just have to justify it. So here's my response. And again, here's what I'm looking for. Okay, so here's my solution. Since f is differentiable, there must be a c where 4 is less than c is less than 6, such that f prime of c equals 4, because f prime of c must equal f of 6 minus f of 4 over 6 minus 4, which equals 15 minus 7 over 6 minus 4, which equals 4 because of the MVT. Okay, so here's what I'm looking for. Number one, you must see that the function is differentiable. So that's what's right. Okay. Number two, you must show me something in here. We need at least one difference quotient. We need f prime of c. 
right? You can go straight from f of 6 minus f of 4 over 6 minus 4. You can go straight from that to 4, okay? or just take your time and go through each step. You can start with 15 minus 7 over 6 minus 4. And we must have the MVT. Those are the things I'm looking for, and I just use the wording of the question to help fill in the gaps. All right, that's it for today. Um, we're going to start our review um, tomorrow on Wednesday and continue it Wednesday, Thursday, Friday um, with some videos going over problems from the review sheet. All right, that's it for today. Talk to you guys later. Two chains. Bye.